Measuring port flow is a good way smart engine builders can gauge the quality of a cylinder head. But if you're looking to do a little port work on a set of heads, raw flow numbers can sometimes be of limited use. And while it's possible to use a pitot tube to get a better idea of how air flows through a specific area of a port, that can also sometimes lead you in the wrong direction because sticking a probe into a port disrupts the flow of air and can give you a false reading. But a new invention by RTS Tooling makes an end to all that. It's called the Pressure Differential Valve, or PD Valve, and it works by actually measuring flow around a valve in the cylinder head. Now, flow through the intake and exhaust can be measured accurately in individual sections throughout the port because the pressure differential tube is embedded inside an actual valve. It's an elegant solution to a complex problem that at first can be a little bit difficult to understand, and especially when it comes to the big question, how can we use this to make more power? Richard Touchette, the owner of RTS Tooling and the inventor of the pressure differential valve, explains it best. When you flow a bunch of cylinder head, you get a quantified flow. Generally, it's in CFM, cubic feet per minute. You want to take it one step further and understand not just how much air is going through that port, where that air actually is in the port. Most guys will pick up a standard pitot probe and test the velocities in certain different areas of that port. Trying to understand where the air is, where the air is not, go to their porting bench, make some changes, and see if it's a positive or a negative, not in just the fact of CFM quantified flow, but where they're directing that air through the port. The problem with that is sticking the pitot probe in the port is like sticking your finger in the port. It affects the flow. It affects the dynamic and the static flow that's in the cylinder head. The closer you get to the valve seat area, the more it affects the flow. What we've done here is we've worked on a new invention. It is a pressure differential valve because everything about CFM and understanding flow differentials is in pressure differentials. We'll take a valve here, he'll be our probe. What we've done here is the valve itself is the probe. There's a hole down the center of the valve, there's a hole all the way out to the valve seat face. We no longer are sticking the probe in the port, the probe is the valve. Setting up the system is relatively straightforward and everything you need except for the flow bench is included in the kit. You begin by sliding the pressure differential valve in the head exactly like you would a real valve. There's also a positioning collar that locks to the cylinder head where the valve spring would be. The positioning collar has a ball detent in it which makes to the eight splines on the PD valve so that you can accurately find the same locations repeatedly and you can use a set of machine spacers which are included to help you determine the exact depth of the face of the valve in the chamber. To use it, slide the valve up into the head so that it's up against the seat. Put a spacer in place against the collar. This, by the way, is a 300 thousandths inch thick spacer. Then drop the locking collar on until it presses against the spacer. Line it up so you know where the hole in the valve is and tighten it down. Now, remove the spacer and press the valve down until you know the locking collar bottoms out against the positioning collar and you know the PD valve is 300 thousandths off the valve seat. The detents will accurately hold the PD valve in eight positions around the radial. And as long as you do not remove the positioning collar, you can repeatedly test at these same positions, even after making physical changes to the port with a grinder. Now with the main components of the hardware in place, Touchette explains the process. We will test all eight positions, pressure differentials, display them on our computer, and look at where the air is entering the combustion chamber and where it's not. Make changes, see whether we've improved our radial flow, or we've, or we've packed all the air to one side of the port. Some guys look at just CFM, but if you're packing all that air just to one side of the port, in the dynamics of a running engine, you're going to have fuel droplets on one side of the port, not radial flow, not good atomization in your combustion chamber. Even though the flow bench might say big air, the dyno will say you're not making much torque. The last step is to prepare the cylinder head as well as the flow bench and connect your pressure gauge to the end of the PD valve with a section of flexible pitting. Now you can quickly and easily gather flow data at eight positions around the radius of the valve and at a range of heights that correspond with your valve lift. To make use of this information, the kit includes software that you can load on your laptop or PC. The main purpose of this custom program is to allow you to quickly see how airflow is distributed throughout the port. The program not only logs the data for each position, it also calculates the percentage of total flow and creates a color-coded map which allows you to easily determine which areas of the port are flowing well 
and which areas, if any, are choked off. Of course, unless it's on the seat, the valve is always in motion. So an accurate flow map at say 300 thousandths lift only tells a small fraction of the story. To get a more accurate understanding of the big picture, you can also quickly scroll through the port maps you've created and see how the flow patterns change as the valve opens and closes, as you can see in this example. And now that we understand how the PD valve works, the real test of its worth will be to see how useful it actually is in a real world situation.